Hey, welcome to Akuma America. I'm Wade Anderson, joined today by Matt Abel, our primary milling application engineer. Today, we're gonna to give you an overview of Akuma's all new bridge mill, the MB80V. So Matt, I know you get the fun job of dealing with all of our big double column machines. I do. So today, you got to uh, do some runs on the all new bridge mill. So let's talk a little bit about the construction of the machine itself and how all of our MB series vertical mills really takes its design elements off of our double column machines. As we look inside the machine, you can see the double column structure. So this is a true bridge where the part would go completely underneath the, the bridge itself. Yep. Our Y axis is basically on the cross slide overhead where the spindle is mounted. Our X axis holds our table. So Matt, tell me a little bit about the table dimensions itself. Sure, so this table on this machine is 800 in the Y, 1600 in the X. We okay. also offer a two meter option, which would give us 2000 millimeters on the uh, X uh, axis. Okay, something that's very important when we talk about the tables and, and the size of parts we would put on this, when you're talking about the Y axis stroke and having an 800 millimeter table, we can actually put a part that's 800 millimeters wide and have access to it because we've got a lot of overhead Y-axis travel. Tell me a little bit about the travel on the X, Y, and Z on this machine. Sure. So on the X-axis, we're able to hit either point of the table. So again, 1,600 millimeters or 2,000 millimeters. Okay. On the Y-axis, 1,050. So this is 800 table, and we can get to either end of the table. On the Z-axis, we have 600 millimeters. All right. How about the tool change capacity? Tell me a little bit about the options that we've got available for ATC capacity on this. Sure, so on this machine, we have a 48 tool belt style tool changer. We can go up to 64 on the belt style. Anything above 64, we go to the matrix. Okay, as we're talking about the tools and the automatic tool change capacity, I notice on the corner of the table, we've got a tool breakage detection. What are two of the most standard type tool breakage options that you see typically on a machine like this? Sure, so the most common is the contact style right here as we have, but we can also go with the laser style. All right, now one of the things I think is very important as we talk about the design elements of any Akuma mill is our thermal friendly concept. All of our machines are designed to start with by thinking about how do we make this the most thermally stable machine in the industry. And one of the things you'll notice as you look inside the machine is you don't see exposed cast iron. That's correct. So the area where your actual motion system is mounted to is protected from coolant, hot chips, things of that nature, because we have sheet metal lining that goes all around the enclosure of the machine. Another important feature of this on both sides of this table, because of the length of tr travel and how long this table is, so we actually have powered conveyors on both sides. That's correct. So instead of utilizing a standard coil type auger conveyor setup, we have powered conveyors to make sure we get all the chips out of the machine to the external chip conveyor and out where they need to go. Step me through a little bit of the shower coolant and just the wash down uh, system that we have for a machine like this. Sure, so this machine is packed full with coolant. We have coolant coming everywhere. So we have the shower coolant up here, which takes care of the workpiece as it's being machined. We have the cross coolant that takes care of the X axis as it moves back and forth. Okay. Um, and we can also, and we also have the coolant for the traditional cutting. Okay. And we also have ports available for any kind of little nooks and crannies. I know there's ports in the back. So if your cutting process is throwing chips into certain key areas, there's ways that we can add additional nozzles and adjust them to match your individual cutting process. That's correct. All right. Tell me a little bit about the chip conveyor setup and how the maintenance aspect of it works. Sure, so the chip, so that you talked about the chip conveyors, they get the chips out and there's a single chip conveyor that takes the chips out to the back of the machine. Okay. The conveyor and the coolant tank are able to slide out of the side of the machine for ease of access. Okay, so very easy to do any kind of general maintenance, preventative maintenance, things That's of correct. that nature. We offer several different types of chip conveyors for a machine like this. This one today is actually equipped with a Concept 2000 chip conveyor. That's a permanent media drum filter. Uh, but we have other uh, styles of chip conveyors available as well. So if you're do. doing heavy, just raw steel cutting and that's all that you do, a standard hinge belt conveyor could go in place of a, of a filtration sure. type conveyor. Like Absolutely. That. All right. What's the weight of a machine like this? So this machine comes in at right around 38,000 pounds. All right, so we've got a lot of mass to be able to absorb any of the heavy type cutting that we would do. All right. Yeah. So Matt, as we talk about the size of parts that would go on a machine like this, 
a very important feature that I think we don't talk enough about is our Servo Navi software. Tell me a little bit about what Servo Navi would do for large part manufacturing. Sure, so this machine comes standard with Servo Navi. Servo Navi allows the machine to configure and figure out how much weight is on the table. Okay. So this machine, 2,000 kilograms, we can go up to, that's the max. So anywhere in between there, the machine, we can run a process and the machine will move the x-axis back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then it determines how heavy is that part on the, on the machine. And what it does is it controls then the ack and deck. So it can control how fast it accelerates and how fast it decelerates. So the important aspect of Servo Navi from a customer perspective is the fact that I can start, if I'm using a really heavy part and I'm gonna whittle that down to uh, say 80% of the part comes out in chips, sure. I could start, run the inertia software where it's gonna figure out the weight on the table that softens my acceleration deceleration rates to maximize how I control that part. But then in the program without any operator intervention, once I get to a certain points, I could rerun that cycle to speed up my acceleration yes. deceleration rates and really maximize my machining environment. Absolutely. Yep, it's right. controlled by a G code. Fantastic. You just put a G code in and it'll rerun. So let's talk a little bit about mold die applications on a machine like this. Tell me what is included in a mold die spec. Sure, so in the mold die spec on this machine, we increase the weight capacity of the table to 4,000 kilograms. Okay. The, the ball screws are a finer pitch. Uh, we have a 0.1 micron control. And then pitch error compensation. Pitch error compensation. So that allows us to laser shoot a machine and really dial in the accuracy on the machine on a customer's floor for any given process. Yes. All right. Matt, I really appreciate your time and all the education you gave me on this sure. machine. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to check out Akuma's social media pages as well as the Akuma website for additional content and future videos.